Hey y'all, welcome back to Jack's Drinkwater Southern Cooking and Barbecue. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to rotisserie a turkey on your Weber kettle from start to finish, from the beginning of how I set up my grill all the way down to that juicy turkey and how I carve it. Let's get going. Grill setup, I got my 22 inch Weber kettle here. I got my bottom vents a quarter of the way open. Everything's out of it. We're gonna put the very bottom grate in there. Next going in is this griddle plate here, or they call this the dripping griddle. It's made by Slow and Sear. This is gonna be our drip pan. If you don't have one of these, just use an aluminum pan. Just put that off to one side. Then we're gonna go in with the Slow and Sear. And Slow and Sear, if you don't have one of these, you could use just bank your charcoal briquettes to the side. But this is gonna keep everything nice and tidy. So we're gonna put that in there. Then if you have the slow and sear, you'll know it comes with that water pan. I'm gonna put the water pan in there, but I'm not gonna put any water in it. That's just gonna help keep them coals a little bit further back to the side, just kind of keep them contained a little bit better. Then we're gonna be using our rotisserie ring, which is made by Cajun Bandit. I'll leave a link to all of this stuff below. They make some off brands of this, Cajun Bandit, I think it's called the Onyx or something like that. I don't have a lot of experience or know much about those. So order one of those at your own peril if you don't have that. I highly recommend the Cajun Bandit though. So now we're gonna start out and light us a half a chimney of coals to start with. We wanna keep this temperature somewhere around 300 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. If you, I was doing a chicken, like you'll see in this video here with the rotisserie, I usually cook that from 350 and up. So let's get these coals going and then season up our bird. All right, before you season your bird, what I recommend is getting some type of a tote or big bowl or something to go underneath. We're gonna season this. It's gonna be on the rotisserie already. What's gonna happen is all of our seasoning, if we have any droppage, it's gonna drop in this tote. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put on this little claw to hold, hold anything. We may have to adjust as we go. Then I'm using this turbo trusser. This thing right here, I used it with a chicken and it keeps everything nice and tight together. I'll sh show you how I'm gonna be using this. If you didn't have this, you might wanna think about using some butcher's twine to keep everything nice and tight. So we're just gonna put that on there just like so. See how it is, all right? Stab this with our skewer here. All right, so notice how I'm actually, the bird is kind of floating here. So your legs go into here, all right? Then you'll see these little eye holes here. You're gonna put them in just like that, all right? And then this turns just like this. And then what happens is, You'll stab your wings like that. Do the same thing on this side. I know it's hard to see from this angle, but literally you just hook and cook. All right, look at there. We are nice and trussed up. You know, when it's spinning, everything's gonna hold just fine. There's not gonna be any flipping and flapping parts. Say that one 10 times real fast. Got my other prongs here. We're just gonna stab it a little bit. Lock that down. During the cook, if your bird happens to shrink, you can always adjust, go closer in with those claws or further out. It's adjustable. So now, we're gonna start seasoning our bird. Now, I use the exact same concoction on my chickens and it goes great on turkeys. What I'm using is not a sponsored video. This is John Henry's Country Chicken Rub. I'm also gonna be going down with some of this John Henry's Pecan Rub. As you can see, I like this stuff a lot. This is the Texas size. What I like to do first is I like to go down with a layer of the Texas Pecan first. Then after that, we go on it with the Country Chicken. Ideally, you would want to do this before you truss this thing up on the skewer. But I have some vegetables here and I'm just gonna stuff everything in the back of the cavity. So again, do this beforehand. I have a car carrot, I have an onion, and I have some celery here and we've seasoned it up with some salt and pepper. And I'm just gonna, again, I'm just gonna stuff the cavity with this. 
All right, we're ready to season this up. Now, I don't have any kind of a binder on it or anything. You could use some oil if you want to, but I, the, the bird's still wet, so I, I don't think we'll have a problem of this rub sticking. And you can see I'm gonna be pretty generous. Now the pecan rub's on, let's go on with our chicken rub. You can see, normally you'd wanna hold this about a 12 inches or whatever above. It's very windy out here, so I'm, you'll notice I'm kinda close. Normally I wouldn't do that. Coals are nice and white and ready to go in here. Go ahead and put the turkey on is what I usually do. Some people might get their grill heated up. I've never had to do that. I don't find it really makes a difference in this case here. So before you get it spinning, you wanna pull it back out of the rotisserie. And you can see this is the heaviest part of my bird that's hanging down right here. You wanna make sure you put your counterweight on the opposite side right here. All right, so we'll go ahead and put that in there. Bird is nice and center. And all right, let's get to spinning. Not real sure how long this is gonna take. A chicken, a, for a normal size chicken, you can figure it's gonna take you about an hour and an hour and a half. In my mind, I'm thinking this is probably gonna take double the amount of time. And I'm also, between chicken and turkey, I'm using less coals for the turkey because in my mind, I'm thinking that the turkey is gonna take a lot longer to cook than the chicken. So I don't wanna put too much coals on here because I'm scared we'll burn the turkey. And now while it's spinning, you wanna also look for some places that you might've missed or the, any of the seasoning that might've fell off. You can go ahead and re-season that. But everything looks pretty good for now. So we're just gonna put the lid on it, let it go for a little bit. And we'll check on it maybe in a half hour. We're gonna monitor our temp, make sure we don't get too high or too low. If we get down below, say, you know, 300, then we're gonna add some more charcoal briquettes on top. Now's a good time if you wanna throw a little bit of uh, smoke wood on here, you can, some little chunks. Um, I've, I've got some sweet berry that I'll probably throw on there. I usually do that with my chicken. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll see you in about 30 minutes. Another thing you wanna do is when you put the lid on it, I usually keep my vent, again, is a quarter of the way open there. And here I got my vent on top about halfway. And notice I have my vent in line with the turkey. In other words, you don't want your lid out of line or your vent out of line with the turkey. And also your temp internally you're looking for for this turkey is 165 in the breast and 175 in the thigh. I think I said sweet berry, I meant sugar berry. We'll just go ahead and throw a couple of those on here. Good stuff. So it's been two and a half hours. I've been coming out here and checking on this every 30 minutes. I think we're about ready. Let's give it a check. Our wings got a little, uh, I kind of figured that was gonna happen. They busted through a little bit. Color on it looks good, a little darker on these wings, but that's okay, we'll work with it. I'm reading about 164, 163, 164. Now remember, we're gonna let this rest for about 20 minutes, so that temperature is gonna come. So rather than risk drying out that breast, I'm gonna go ahead and pull it. All right. Pull this over here. This smells incredible. All right, I'm gonna let it cool before we undo the uh, turbo trusser. We'll keep everything nice and tight like that. And uh, we'll see in about 20 minutes. I'll show you how I carve it up. All right guys, we're about ready to carve this up. Now I'm gonna show you, this is just how I do it. I find it's the best way and every Thanksgiving or anytime we have turkey, there's nothing left. All right, so the first thing I do is I go right into the legs and in this V area right here, hopefully you can see that, we're just gonna kind of slice into that, all right? Just getting that skin to where exposing 
things because there's a there's a joint in here. All right, you'll feel when you'll feel it when you're going down. You'll see this. All right, you probably didn't hear. Maybe you heard that pop or not. But there's a little joint, and I'm gonna see if I can show you this joint. Can you see that joint right there? You're gonna want to go cut behind that joint. Okay. So now what you have here is you have the leg and the thigh. And what you want to do is some people like the legs. So you want to take off the leg and keep this section right here. And there's a bone that runs down in this area and you can debone that as well. And you'll get something, you'll get something like that is your thigh bone. All right. There's our two legs. And we have our big thigh here. All right. We have our thigh here that we haven't deboned yet. So that's up to you if you want to debone it, but you can feel the bone in here. It takes a little bit of effort, but you just trace the, the bone. And all you have left is some dark meat. Let's get this cartilage. All right, so if we can be careful, try to hold this skin up. That right there is a boneless thigh and we'll carve that up into little bits and bobs. But for now, let's just set this off to the side and move on. You can do this one or two ways. You can pop off those wings if you want to right now, or you can leave them on. We could, you can even do them last. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and just start here and you'll feel that bone. I'm just gonna do me a little cut. Oh man, the juice is just running out of this. So you'll feel that, you'll feel your way through this. Now, you don't wanna saw, you kinda just wanna long strokes and you wanna go directly down and just follow the bone, pulling as you go. All right. Okay, when I get to about right here, then I'm gonna go right up under the wing and just kind of make me a vertical cut here. And you'll see, you'll see that That right there is one solid, huge turkey breast, okay? So I'm just gonna set that off to the side, and we're gonna do the same thing to the other side. Now we're gonna pull these wings off, and they'll just pop, and you'll see your drumette right here. All right, there's your little wing drumette, and then you'll see you have your flat here, and you just separate the tip off because the tip ain't really worth nothing. And there's your flat. Pretty simple how to plate this up. I mean, you can pl plate it, place it on the tray ever how you like, but there's a knack for cutting things up. And we're gonna start with cutting the breast first. And if you notice, our grains of this is, are running this way. So what you wanna do is you wanna cut in the opposite direction. Now, we used a boning knife when we carved it up. So now we got a fresh knife, a different one, and we're gonna just kinda slice it, pieces, right? Keep everything good. I'm going easy, cause I don't, I wanna keep that, I wanna keep that skin on there. So just kinda go real easy and we're doing chunks. Got to be careful. I don't want to get that skin off. Try to keep it on there. And you can go straight down if you want. You can go at an angle like that. We're going to do some chunks like this. Maybe the next breast we'll do the other direction. Or more on a, would you call that a bias? By carving this up like this, you're letting everyone in your party 
get something different. You got some people that like white meat, you got some people that like dark meat, you got some people that just like the drumettes or the drumsticks. So this way, everybody gets a little, a little bit of everything. Now what I do is, I just kind of keep everything together and it goes straight from this board over to my plate. Straight to the board and onto my plate. Same thing with this one, but this time, we can hopefully keep the skin on. We're gonna kinda do a little bit of that. All right, that looks good. Again. All right, that looks good. All right, next up, we have our dark meat here, our thighs. I'm just gonna kinda go like this, make these a little bit more manageable pieces. And I'm gonna just chunk them up like so. All right, dark meat. I'm gonna put that right there. Same thing over here. All right, here we go. This is what we got going on here. Again, arrange it how you want. You know, we got a good bit of everything here. We got breast on both sides. We got our drumsticks here. We have our drumette here. We have some wings on both sides. Here, right here, we have the thighs on both ends there. And this way everyone can go in there and just take what they want. This will be an empty plate if it's at your house or anyone's house because people are just gonna tear into it. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to rotisserie your turkey from start to finish. If you like this video, make sure you go down there right now, hit that subscribe button and also smash that like button. All right guys, rotisserie chicken on your Weber kettle do it.